Hello students, today we are going to discuss about the relevance approach of dividend policy. The second school of thought on dividends holds that the dividend decisions affects the value of firm. According to them, dividends communicates information to the investors about the firm's profitability and hence dividend decisions becomes irrelevant. The firms which do not pay dividends are rated in oppositely by investors which affects the share prices. People who supports relevance of dividends clearly states that regular dividends reduces uncertainty of the shareholders. That is, the earnings of the firm is discounted at a lower rate, which means that the cost of capital, which stands for KE, which means that the cost of capital for a firm will be less, thereby increasing the market value. However, it's exactly opposite in the case of increased uncertainty due to non-payment of dividends. Therefore, firms who pays higher dividends will have greater value as compared to those which do not pay dividends or maybe who pays lesser amount of dividends. Two important approaches supporting dividend relevance are Walter approach and Gordon approach. Now let's start with Walter approach. Walter supports that the dividend decisions are relevant and it affects the value of firm. Walter approach has certain assumption. I am discussing few of the important assumptions of Walter approach wherein the first one is that retained earnings are the only source of financing investment in the firm which means that there is no external financing involved. The second important assumption of Walter approach is that the cost of capital which is denoted by the symbol and the rate of return on investment which is denoted by the symbol R are constant. That is, even if new investment decisions are taken by the firm, the risk of the business remains same. And the third assumption of the Walter approach is that the firm's life is endless. That is, there is no closing down of the firm. According to the Walter, basically the firm's decisions to give or not to give out the dividends depends on whether it has enough opportunities to invest the retained earnings. That is, a strong relationship between the investment and dividend decisions is considered by the Walter. Now let's start with the description of the model. According to Walter, the dividend decisions are very much relevant towards the value of a firm and the price of the shares. Walter feels that the dividends paid to the shareholders are reinvested by the shareholders further to get higher returns. This is referred to as the opportunity cost of the firm or the cost of capital which is denoted by this symbol. So according to the Walter, if the firm is going to distribute the profits in terms of the dividends to the shareholders, then the shareholder is going to reinvest that part of the dividend so that he can earn a higher rate of return. Another situation where the firm do not pay out the dividends, then the firm is going to invest the profits or maybe the retained earnings in the profitable opportunities so that they can earn returns on such investments. Here the returns are denoted by the symbol R. This rate of return for the firm must at least be equal to the cost of capital. If this happens then the returns of the firm is equal to the earnings of the shareholders if the dividends were paid. Thus it's clear that if rate of return which is denoted by the symbol R is more than the cost of capital then the returns from the investment that the firm has made is more than the returns shareholders receives from further investments which seems to be a profitable situation for the shareholders. So according to the professor Walter if rate of return is greater than the cost of capital that is if the firm earns a higher rate of return on its investments then the required rate of return of the investors then the firm should retain the earnings. Such firms are termed as the growth firms and the optimum payout ratio would be zero in these cases. So if a firm is a growth firm which has a higher rate of return which is more than the required rate of return of the investors then these kinds of firms should not pay out the dividends and doing so will further maximize the value of firm. 
However, in the case of a declining firm, which is situation 2, these kinds of firms do not have the profitable investments. That is, here the rate of return is less than the cost of capital. Or you can also say that these kinds of firms have low rate of return than the required rate of return by the investors. So if a firm is a decline firm, then the firm should distribute the earnings. For such firms, the optimum payout ratio would be 100%. And these kinds of firms should distribute all of their earnings as dividends. Since the decline firm in this stage do not have any investment opportunities available with them, therefore they won't be able to meet the expectations of their investors. Therefore, they should distribute all of their profits in form of dividends to their investors. And the third case is of the normal firm where the rate of return is equal to the cost of capital, which can also be said as that the rate of return is exactly the same as the required rate of returns of investors. In these types of firms, the dividend policy will not affect the market value of shares as the shareholders will get the same returns from the firms as expected by them. For such firms, there is no optimum dividend payout and the value of the firm would not change with the change in the dividend rate, which denotes that the firm is indifferent between dividends and the investments. So these kind of normal firms can either distribute whole of their earnings in form of dividends or they can retain the amount of money because it does not have any effect on the valuation of a firm. Although the model provides a simple framework to explain the relationship between the market value of the shares and the dividend policy, yet it has certain unrealistic assumptions. The assumption of no external financing apart from retained earning for the firm make further investment is not really followed in the real world. And the constant rate of return and the cost of capital are seldom found in real life. Because as and when a firm invests more, the business risk changes. So these are few criticism against the Walter approach. Now let's start with the another approach, which is Gordon approach. The Gordon has also supported the dividend relevance policy. Gordon believes in regular dividends affecting the share price of the firm. There are certain assumptions underlying the Gordon approach. Moreover, the Gordon's assumptions are very much similar with the one given by the Walter. However, there are two additional assumptions proposed by him and these assumptions are that the product of retention ratio, which I am denoting with the symbol B, and the rate of return which I am denoting with the symbol R, gives us the growth rate of the firm, which is being denoted by the symbol G. So in a simple sense, B into R is denoted by the symbol G. And according to the second assumption, the cost of capital is not only constant, but it's greater than the growth rate. Now let's move toward the model description. So according to the Gordon, Investors are risk averse and believes that the income from the dividends are certain rather than income from the future capital gain. Therefore, they predict future capital gain to be more risky because as the investors feel the current dividend distribution to be more certain, therefore, they discount the future capital gain at a higher rate than the firm's earnings which we have already discussed in second assumption where we said that that the cost of capital is not only constant but it's greater than the growth rate. So in short, when the retention rate increases, the investors require a higher discounting rate and when the firm distributes the earnings in the form of dividends, they require lower discounting rate. Therefore, the model shows a relationship between the payout ratio, rate of return, cost of capital and the market price of the shares. Gordon's idea were very much similar to the Walters idea and therefore the criticisms are also similar. Both of them clearly states the relationship between the dividend policy and the market value of firms. Thank you.